You love hockey, but do you know every team? No, I'm not talking about the 31 you already know about. I'm talking about those other teams that were officially part of the NHL but are no longer with us today. This is every team no longer in the NHL. Who is going to win? Everyone wants to know. Some like the Rangers, some like Toronto. Wherever they are, whatever they're doing, wherever sport fans get together, hockey is news, good news. Good enough news to bring us from the fireside, crowds of us, gay, hopeful, good-natured crowds. Pretty much I'm going to give some basic background of the team. If you want a long version of each team's history, I'll include their respective wikis in the description. Just to be a little bit more clear, I'll put at the bottom of the screen when the team was founded, when the team joined the NHL, and when the team was folded. So, if you didn't know, the NHL started because a group of team owners in the NHA, or National Hockey Association, were petty to this guy named Eddie Livingston, who owned the Toronto Shamrocks. Just so they didn't have to deal with Eddie anymore, someone had the idea, let's make a different league and not invite him. And everyone else was like, Go, okay. So the original teams in the NHL are the Montreal Wanderers, the Montreal Canadiens, the Ottawa Senators, the Quebec Bulldogs, and the Toronto Maple Leafs, at this time called the Toronto Arenas. The team would not be owned by Livingston, cause f that guy. So the first round of the teams out of the NHL are going to be the Montreal Wanderers, Quebec Bulldogs, and the Ottawa Senators. And I hear you already, but the Senators are in the NHL, Brendan. I'll have you know that the Senators you know are a completely different team that didn't start until 1992. This team is honoring the original team through their name. You might see this example again somewhere on this list. So why are they gone? Well, Ottawa just never was able to hit sales targets. Once again, another thing you'll see on this list quite a bit. Around the end of their stretch as a professional team, they started selling players to rival teams and even hosting home games outside of Ottawa like in Detroit and New York. The Senators ended up moving to St. Louis becoming the St. Louis Eagles in 1933, and disbanded after one season in the 1934-1935 NHL season. The new Senators are still considered a different team from the original by the league. The Montreal Wanderers are a different story. Their arena burnt down. Yeah, it literally fell to ashes and they couldn't afford to rebuild. They played four games. The opening season of the NHL's 1917-1918 was their last season. They were pretty good in the NHA, but four games. The Quebec Bulldogs, because of disputes with the NHA and NHL, weren't actually able to play until the 1919-1920 season, and through their whole career sucked. They were so bad the other team had to give them players to compensate. They were so bad the NHL pretty much changed their minds about giving Quebec a team and moves them to Hamilton to become the Tigers, where they continued to blow. In 1925, big-time bootlegger Big Bill Dwyer gets the rights to an expansion team in New York named the New York Americans and starts buying up the Hamilton players. Hamilton was able to place first in their division in their last year, but due to the first ever player strike, didn't play in the playoffs and soon after were kicked from the NHL. So we're in the 1920s. The teams added between 1924 and 1931 that stayed are the Chicago Blackhawks, Detroit Cougars, later the Red Wings, and the New York Rangers. The teams going bye-bye are the Montreal Maroons, the New York Americans, and the Pittsburgh Pirates. The American story seems to follow that of a company trying to hold on for dear life. Like I said before, a majority of the roster was made up of the Hamilton Tigers who came first the season before, but that doesn't mean anything because they would have their on-seasons, but also had a lot more off-seasons. Once Prohibition was becoming less of a thing, bootlegger and owner of the Americans, Big Bill Dwyer, couldn't afford to pay his debts, and the team was taken over by the NHL and later given to the coach Reed Dutton to run. Dutton changes his name to the Brooklyn Americans and plans to move the team out of Madison Square Garden, but that never happened. See, the problem was that because the team was playing out of Madison Square Garden, they had to directly compete with the New York Rangers, who also were playing there. The Rangers joined the NHL one year after the Americans did in 1926 because the president of Madison Square Garden saw the popularities the Americans had at first and made his team. Even after telling the owners of the Americans he wouldn't make a team. <laughs> Snake. In general, the Rangers were just a better team and the Americans never came back for the 1942-43 season. Pittsburgh's story is pretty easy, so Big Bill Dwyer, yes the same Bill Dwyer, ends up buying the team with his buddy Benny Leonard when the team was first in financial trouble. But thanks to the depression and the $400,000 of debt they collected, the team moved to Philly to become the Philadelphia Quakers, where they continued to lose money. Once they took a pause in the 1930-31 season to find a permanent arena, which never happened, the team left the league that season. The Montreal Maroons were a decent team, winning the Stanley Cup twice and finishing first in their division twice, but that doesn't always mean your team is safe. They were brought around to replace the Montreal Wanderers and catered to the English-speaking audience in Quebec. For a lot of the teams, you will learn how bad the Great Depression was because even though the Canadians were struggling too, more people were watching them, and the teams were both owned by the same company by this point. 
After plans to move the team to Philadelphia fell through, they stopped playing in the NHL by 1947 after not playing the league since 1938. So by this time, World War II is in full swing, teams are losing players left and right, and after so many teams have left, we're down to the original six. Boston Bruins, Chicago Blackhawks, Detroit Red Wings, Montreal Canadiens, New York Rangers, and the Toronto Maple Leafs. And now you know they aren't actually officially the original six. Six new NHL cities and six new teams to ignite the passions of hometown fans. The exploits of Vezina, Morenz, Howe, Hull, and all the others who made and are making hockey the game it is have fashioned the dreams of the kids who will take their places. In 1952, the merger of two different hockey leagues into one created the WHL, which was becoming a real competitor for the NHL. People could see its potential and so did the NHL, because the WHL's rise in emerging markets and potential TV rights made the league decide to expand with six more teams for the 1967-1968 season. The teams introduced were the California Seals, the Los Angeles Kings, the Minnesota North Stars, the Philadelphia Flyers, the Pittsburgh Penguins, and the St. Louis Blues. The Minnesota North Stars become the Dallas Stars, so one of these things is now like the other. The California Seals, or later the California Golden Seals, or later the Oakland Seals, were never really popular. A deal with CBC called for two expansion teams to be in California, and the Bay Area was never really buzzing for hockey. Once the team moved to Oakland and changed their name to the Oakland Seals to cater more to their area, nothing changed. They wanted to move the team to Vancouver or to Buffalo, but was denied by the NHL. And what does any red, white, and blue-blooded American do in this situation? OBJECTION! Sue. They sued because the NHL didn't want them to move their franchise and felt they were being denied their right. They lost that case and eventually got sold to the owner of the Oakland Athletics. They continue sucking from 1971 to 74, get sold one more time, become the Cleveland Barons, and then fold after the 1977-78 season. They do, I guess, technically merge with the North Stars, but that was way later in their life. The story of the Minnesota North Stars is the first team to leave the NHL by becoming another team and actually sticking around. The team started in the 1967-68 expansion season, and the simple reason for the move would be poor sales and apparently pressure from the star's owner's wife, who wanted them to move the team or she would leave him. <laughs> what? The team was decent enough making two Stanley Cup final appearances, but like I said before, that confirms no future for your team because their worst season was 1948-13, and 13, so... By Minnesota. Between 1970 and 82, more teams were added. In 1974, the WHL folded. There was a couple of reasons for this. The World Hockey Association, which you'll learn a little bit about in a second, moved into some of their traditional markets, so that sucked. The talent pool had been strained, so that also sucked. And the NHL was making more teams, so they were like, nah, we're done. Some teams from the WHL ended up actually joining the NHL, so it works out for them, I guess. Well, Vancouver is moving east, and Chicago is heading west as the National Hockey League took on two new members late this afternoon. Vancouver and Buffalo were given conditional franchises for the modest fee of $6 million apiece. Some of the teams added were the Buffalo Sabres, the Vancouver Canucks, the New York Islanders, the Atlanta Flames, the Washington Capitals, the Kansas City Scouts, the Edmonton Oilers, the Hartford Whalers, the Quebec Nordiques, and the original Winnipeg Jets. In 1972, a new league, the WHA, was emerging, so the NHL wanted to expand, which is when they added the New York Islanders and the Atlanta Flames. The Flames are simple. They were never good, and they were never popular. So after a bit of a bidding war, the team was sold in 1980 after only eight years. The Flames still used the Atlanta logo for their alternative captains, so they still remember their history. The Kansas City Scouts didn't last that long. They were around from 1972 to 74. They never made the playoffs, and you know what? I'll let you guess. Either A, low attendance, B, a fire, or C, ex-wife troubles. Yeah, I think you can guess. After the 74-76 season, they became the Colorado Rockies. They were around until 1982, where they continued to fail, and would later move to New Jersey to become the Devils. The Quebec Nordiques were originally part of the WHA. Once the WHA folded, some of the more popular teams, that being the Nordiques, the Jets, the Whalers, and the Oilers, joined the NHL. Quebec was fierce competition to the Canadians, like one of the biggest bloodbaths in hockey happens between these two, so if you're interested in that, watch this video. Moving on. Just like most teams, the financial troubles and always being second to the Canadians motivated the move to Colorado to become the Avalanche in 1995. The Hartford Whalers were actually a pretty decent team. They even had Gordie Howe for a season. He was part of the team with his sons in the WHA after his retirement from the Red Wings, and even after the team joined the NHL, he played one last season. So what happened? 
Well, as time goes by, people lose interest, and after many attempts by fans to leave the team where it was, they ultimately ended up moving to Carolina to become the Hurricanes. They're pretty hard to forget, especially because they're back, but the Winnipeg Jets to me are always a memorable team. I was born in 1998, so they weren't really around in the NHL when I was younger, but I still knew who they were. They're pretty hard to forget now because the Jets are back, but I'll get to that in just a bit. The Jets never competed for the Stanley Cup, but made the playoffs many times. Their worst season was the 1980-81 season where they went 9-57-14. and Later in the team's life, they were having to pay some of the American players on their team in American dollars, and the exchange rate for Canada to America at the time was just awful, so the team was sold and moved to Arizona to become the Arizona Coyotes. Almost done here. Between 1991 and 2017, a lot of teams were added, but not many were removed. The San Jose Sharks, the Ottawa Senators, the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Florida Panthers, the Anaheim Ducks, the Nashville Predators, the Atlanta Thrashers, the Columbus Blue Jackets, the Minnesota Wild, and the Vegas Golden Knights were added. Only one of these teams are no longer in the NHL. Do you guys happen to know where the Thrashers play? Thrashers? Yeah. They play at Phillips? What? The Thrashers? Hockey yeah, team? they don't play here in Atlanta anymore. Wait, what? Atlanta is the only city in modern hockey to have two teams moved. Just like most relocations, the team wasn't making sales, and after being sold to True North Sports and Entertainment, the team relocated to Winnipeg becoming the New Jets, who have no relation to the original team, but honor them in a lot of ways. So, that's every team no longer in the NHL. I mean, leave a comment for which team you guys miss the most and would like to see join the NHL again. For me, maybe the Hartford Whalers just because I really like their jersey, but that, that's really about it. Anyways, like and subscribe if you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll be sure to make a new one as soon as I can. I, I procrastinate a lot, so I'll see you guys when I see you guys.